JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for June the 1st. I am Haralamos Pissuros, Head of Research here at JFT. and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded higher against all but one of the other major currencies on Tuesday and during the Asian session Wednesday. The only currency against which the greenback did not uh, record any gains and instead was found virtually unchanged was the Canadian dollar. The greenback gained the most ground versus uh, the yen, the kiwi, uh, with the euro well behind taking uh, the third place. Now we now argue the strengthening of the US dollar and the weakening of the Kiwi point to a risk of uh, trading activity but the fact that the yen was the main loser points otherwise thus in order to clear things up we prefer to turn our gaze to the equity world. Here we see that uh, most major European indices traded in the red with Wall Street following suit. Today in Asia Things were a little bit better, but uh, not uh, much. Yes, Japan's Nikkei gained, but uh, China, Shanghai Composite, and Hong Kong's Hang Seng slid. South, Korea KOSP, uh, South Korea's KOSPI remained closed. Now, on Monday, we saw we we. Uh, we saw that investors' appetite improved due to news uh, that China is planning to remove um, several COVID-related restric restrictions. However, we stayed reluctant uh, for a long-lasting recovery, and this was due to the risks of accelerating inflation in the Eurozone, as well as the latest hoggish remarks by Fed Governor Christopher Waller, who said that he's advocating for 50 basis points hikes at each of the upcoming Fed gatherings until there is substantial reduction in inflation. Until we get that, I don't see the point of stopping, Waller uh, clearly added, uh, putting cold water on uh, speculation that the Fed may uh, pause its monetary policy tightening uh, after summer. Now, with all that, it appears that we were somewhat right, uh, that uh, equities could come back under some selling interest. We saw them uh, sliding yesterday on renewed concerns of aggressive tethering by major central banks and in this case uh, the ECB and the Fed. Now, uh, with regards to Eurozone's inflation data, uh, we got them yesterday, the, pre the preliminary rates. The headline rate jumped to 8.1% from 7.4% at the time when the forecast was at 7.7% while the core rate rose to 3.8% from 3.5%. So we saw uh, accelerating inflation in both headline and underlying terms. The ECB target is, as, is at 2%. Headline inflation now runs at 8.1%, while the core one is also uh, above uh, that target at 3.8, almost double the target. Uh, so, uh, we don't have any signs of inflation uh, cooling in the Eurozone. On the contrary, uh, consumer prices are still accelerating. Now, last week, ECB President Christine Lagarde said that the ECB is likely to take its deposit interest rate out of the negative territory by the end of September and could lift it further if needed. Given that the deposit rate now lies at minus 0.5%, uh, percent, we initially believed that this means two quarter point liftoffs perhaps one in July and one in September. And actually some of uh, some other ECB officials also supported that view. 
However, we believe that the more unanticipated, the more unanticipated acceleration in inflation may have increased speculation or of more aggressive action by the ECB. Perhaps uh, that the size of the July uh, hike may be 50 basis points, and even if the officials hike by 25 basis points in July, they could hit the bigger increase uh, for September. Now, in any case, speculation of uh, a more aggressive ECB could keep the euro supported, but we doubt that it can out it can uh, it can keep outperforming its US counterpart, especially after Waller's remarks. After all, the US economy is in a better shape than uh, the eurozone, which could allow Fed officials to keep delivering double hikes, despite some concerns over uh, slowdown recently. More Fed officials supporting Waller's uh, view of uh, no break after summer could help the dollar, the dollar to recover more. Now, as for today, the most important event on the agenda may be the Bank of Canada interest rate decision. Expectations point to another double hike, and thus, if indeed this is the case, we believe that investors will quickly turn their attention to the accompanying statement for clues and hints as to how this bank is planning to move forward. Last time, officials of the Bank of Canada decided to hike rates by 50 basis points, as was expected, noting that uh, rates will need, to write, um, uh, will need to rise further. Governor Macklem specifically said we need high rates and the economy can handle them, adding that they are prepared to move as forcefully as needed to get inflation on target. Now, with data since then, keep adding credence to that view. We believe that policymakers will maintain a hoggish language, something that could support further the Canadian dollar. Now, as for the rest of uh, today's events, from the US we get the ASM manufacturing PMI for May, with the forecast pointing to a slide to 54.5 from 55.4. This could confirm somewhat uh, worries over a slowdown in the US economy, but we doubt that it would revive speculation over a pause by the Fed after the summer, especially after Weller's uh, remark. After all, Friday we get the official employment report for May, which may be of more importance for market participants in adjusting their bets with regards to the Fed's uh, future course of action. So, that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the many events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm hosting every Monday at 7 o'clock AM GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So, goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to uh, seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.